Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, there's just a ton of stuff to go over and uh, we just need to jump right in. So first up, Uniswap becomes the first decentralized exchange to beat Coinbase Pro and Kraken by a huge margin in daily trading volume. And I got to tell you, if you are associated with these centralized exchanges, you have to be worried about what's going on with DeFi. Also, Visa exec says opt out with Bitcoin, slamming the Fed's new policy towards inflation and Chinese bank disables digital yuan wallet after soft launch. And when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking to myself, well, how much power are these central banks going to have? Because it looks like they're able to shut off your wallet or anybody's wallet just like that. Ethereum Classic hit by a third 51% attack in a month, and I gotta ask the question, why is this thing even listed? And finally, Chainlink acquires blockchain Oracle solution from Cornell University, and we may be looking at a new white paper from Chainlink. Also, before we go on, I just wanna make mention that uh, Unstoppable Domains, there was an interesting email that was sent out, and it says that uh, sex sells, essentially, and uh, the domain of sex.crypto sold for $90,000 on Friday. So if you don't know about Unstoppable Domains, you're able to buy the .crypto, the .zillica, or .zill uh, domains, just like you were able to buy the .coms and .orgs and whatever else uh, back in the uh, 90s when that was all blowing up. So people were buying like Casper.com and Pets.com, and they sold them for millions, right? I'm not saying that's going to happen again, but here's an example of what just happened. Somebody sold or bought sex.crypto for probably not too much, and they sold for $90,000. So if you're looking to, to purchase some domains that you have in your head, go ahead and go over to Unstoppable Domains. There's a link in the description. Look something like this. And that way you know you're getting the right one. Well, before we do all that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is August 31st. And if you noticed over the weekend, I had no video put out. I was just feeling under the weather, just could not get out there to do it. And there was so much, so many interesting stories going on. I, was, I regretted it. But, uh, you know, sometimes when you work a little bit too much, you just got to take that break. And that was my break for the weekend for sure. But anyhow, here we are back. And I got to tell you, it's nice to come back to a green day. So Bitcoin is up. 11.7, almost hitting that 12K mark at 0.3% up for the 24 hour. Very happy about that. Ethereum, fantastic. It's above $400 and I like to see this, but I gotta tell you, when I'm looking at Ethereum and all the decentralized or DeFi products that are going on, everything's built on Ethereum. Ethereum is the world computer. It is the everything that kind of makes things run right now is being built on Ethereum. That's why those fees are so outrageous. But uh, I got I think that uh, Ethereum is going to go uh, all the way to the moon with everything that's built upon it. But we'll see. Tether's Tether and XRP is XRP. Enough said. Chainlink down 5% to $16. But hey, still holding strong. I'm glad it's above 15. We'll see what it does. Polkadot oscillating between uh, number five and number six position as it's uh, jockeying with there with Chainlink. But uh, up 7% at 637. So all you Polkadot holders who got in at 2 and $3, congratulations. Bcash, Litecoin, Cardano up 5%, amazing. Uh, Bitcoin SV in the top 10, don't know why. And uh, that's the big stuff. Tron's up, I like to see that. All you Tron holders, congratulations. NEM, VChain. And then the darlings here, Yearn Finance and UMA, and also Aave or Aave. I mean, it's down 4%, but still up pretty massively. If you gotta take a look at this, look at the price of Yearn Finance. For one token, it is $38,103. This is the power of decentralized finance and yield farming, or essentially um, giving your coins up or staking them or borrowing, and then that platform giving you a governance token just for borrowing or just for staking. I mean, it's amazing. It's like getting a, um, a, a mortgage for your house and going, hey, thanks for using XYZ Bank. Here's some free money. That's essentially what's going on here. I don't know if this is sustainable. <laughs> I don't think so, but it's a it's a very interesting prospect. And we're gonna I'm going to over the next couple of weeks delve more into decentralized finance. But there's a lot of different moving parts, and um, I'm just going to you know go down that rabbit hole for the next couple of weeks, spend a lot of money, and uh, see where I end up. So we'll see how that all works out. But uh, let's break into today's top stories. So first up, Uniswap becomes the first DEX to beat Coinbase Pro and Kraken. And, and I got to tell you, it doesn't seem like it's uh, way off to me. I think this is due to happen. And if you are a centralized exchange, you have to look around and just go, you know what? Are we becoming obsolete? I don't know. ETH-based heavy mover Uniswap 
has made history after making an all-time high daily trading volume of 589 million to become the first DEX to surpass Coinbase Pro and Kraken. A comparison of both trading giants shows that Uniswap's trading volume is 18% higher than Coinbase Pro's at 404 million and a whopping 52% higher than Kraken's at 187 million. So it states the exploring DeFi activity that's seen investors jumping headfirst into daily emerging platforms, especially in yield farming, has boosted liquidity services that Uniswap offers best. Uniswap offers traders to swap ERC tokens and others from different blockchains conveniently with 100 available token pairs and the liquidity of a, is uh, 1 billion or so. So when I was reading this, I'm like, well, in case you don't know, uh, Uniswap, you can take a look at it here. This is what the website looks like, but I have read other reports about Uniswap being uh, impersonated and people losing a whole ton of money. So just so you know, in the comments or in the description section of all my videos, there's going to be an exchange fees and wallet uh, alternatives to Coinbase. And it just goes through everything from Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, Celsius, Voyager, Gemini, Uphold, Abra, SimpleSwap, Uniswap, everything you can think of that I've ever used or I'm currently using. And I break them down by the fees and the APRs and the APYs and everything that you can really want to know and if it's recommended or not. So instead of Googling Uniswap, uh, just go to this exchange sheet and this is the actual domain. So you can find that link in the description. Looks like this. And for all of these links, you know you're going to the right place. And also, if you wanna sign up for anything that, that's here, usually they have an affiliate link that you can get between 10 and $25. You don't have to use my affiliate link, uh, but you can just go right there and uh, go ahead and sign up for it. But if you do use it, it's between 10 and 25 bucks. So that's up to you. Okay, so Uniswap. So the big thing is, so we're here on the website itself. I'm just gonna click on launch app here or in the middle, doesn't matter. And the whole thing is that you have to connect your MetaMask wallet. And if you have a Brave browser, it's super simple. All you gotta do, and you can't really see it here, but uh, on the top left of every computer that you're using, it's gonna say Brave if you have your Brave browser open. You're gonna click on Brave. You're gonna go into Preferences. Under Preferences, uh, you got Settings, Brave Rewards, History, blah, blah, blah crypto wallets and right here you just you're able to set it up you just click on a button and then off it goes and there's you can deposit your ethereum so like what i just do is i just deposit my ethereum to uh, this address and i usually just send it over from either my ledger or from my uh, gemini account and uh, then it's already pre-funded with ethereum now how do i get to this uh you know get celsius and usdc well, I need to go through Uniswap. So I have this connected to my Brave browser. When I go to Uniswap, see how it has the balance 1.29? It's reading my crypto wallet that is attached to my Brave browser. Same thing, you could do it with a Ledger or whatever other options that they have, but that's what I use, just makes it simple for me. Again, I do not put a ton of money on my um, my Ether wallet or my, or my Brave wallet. It's just for little things that I wanna do here and there. I keep the majority in my Nano Ledger, which is cold storage and I don't have to worry about things. So if I wanna find a token, an ERC token, let's take a look, what do they have? Well, they got pretty much everything you can think of. And there's different ones as far as like, um, right down here where it says Zerion Explorer, let's change that. Let's go to, there's all these different types of uh, lists that they have. Let's go for the Uniswap default list. And here you have everything. You have Celsius, Dai, I mean, Adai, Ant. I mean, it just goes on forever, honestly. So pretty much everything you're looking for is pretty much right here. And if, you want, if you're looking for something else, you're like, well, I want it specifically to DeFi. Let's change this over. How about the Ave token list? Well, let's see what we got. Okay, USDC. Uh, you've got A, uh, Binance, USD, KNC, A Lend, A Link. So everything with DeFi is right here. So I want to, let me just go back here. This is why this is so popular because everything is here. I'm going to buy some more Celsius. I like Celsius. How much I want to get? Well, let's see. Well, Celsius is around, I don't know, 40 cents around, somewhere around there. So let's say I want to get 100. Let's just round it up. Let's just go 0 0.01 or 0 0.1, excuse me. 0 0.1. Same way, 101 Celsius at 40 cents. It's like 40 bucks. All right, so not too bad. And just so you see underneath here, liquidity provider fee. So this is the whole thing about DeFi. They need your cryptocurrency either to, to stake it or to borrow against it. So if you do something like this, it's all right there. And then you get that fee that is generated for all these different services. So it's a pretty cool thing. And um, I gotta tell you, I mean, as far as like moving into the future, 
where banks are going to be, what's going to happen in the future, what's going to happen with these centralized exchanges. I mean, it's an exciting time. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but it's the same thing back when the internet came about. Nobody had any idea that you would have a job as like a, a an SEO person, a search engine optimize optimization, or somebody who would you know build actual websites that would be you know specific for for marketing and pop ups and things like that. And then I don't think anything. I mean, when cryptocurrency came about, especially in 2010, 2009, 2008. No one had any idea this would actually be here, that we would be directly competing uh, with banks for everything, not just for, for currency, but for lending and for staking and for derivatives and, and, and everything you can think of. I think as time goes on, it's going to be, um, I mean, just like Alex Mashinsky said, it's going to swallow the internet whole. All right, so enough of that little speech. Let's go for a little swap action. Click on that. I want to confirm this. And just so, so you know, output is estimated. You'll receive at least 97 cell or the transaction will revert because of the transaction fees. And I'm going to confirm the swap. And it's going to ask me to confirm that. Is this what I want to do? What the? And see this gas fee? That's crazy. 1948. Let's take a look at that. Let's edit that. So here's the basic and here's some advanced. If I want to make this uh, 20 minutes, it's only a <laughs> 50 cents. Get out of here. So let's do this. See how it says gas price 300? Let's drop it down to 50 and see how long that's gonna take. So I'm, like, so I'm gonna put it at 10. Let's just try 10. Because the new total is 4398 and it's gonna be the transaction time is more than two minutes. I'm telling you it's probably gonna take hours because look at that. That's insane time. So let's just let's just click save. See what we got. So my gas fee now is 65 cents, which is a lot better than $18. Here's the total, and I'm gonna confirm. Now, just so you know, this is gonna take a long time, but I got nothing but time. I'm fine. Let's see if it actually goes through. And it didn't go through because not enough. Let's try this again. If I can swap. Gas fee, $19. No way am I doing that. We'll edit the gas fee. We can go from, geez, it already jumped up. It was uh, 1850, now it's 1950, 1933. So let's go to advanced, which you can't see, but it's right above, right above here, it's advanced. So we got 300. Let's go for 100. Gas price is similar. Sure, let's save it. So what's the gas fee? $6.49, amazing. So let's see if that works, jeez. So that's pretty high amount, but there we are. That's what it is. So Ethereum's gonna be awesome. If they can just deal with those fees, hopefully something can happen there. So we'll see how long it's gonna take. I expect that it could take at least an hour or so, but we will find out. Anyhow, that's it. Let's move on to the next section. So this story I thought was pretty awesome in the beginning, but it's really not. It's just uh, Visa exec says out that Bitcoin. I'm like, oh, wow, Visa said that. But you gotta understand, it's a Visa exec, and it's just it's just a guy who really is into Bitcoin. So on Thursday, 17 top Federal Reserve officials explained that they're going to let the interest rate run a little bit hot as far as for the excuse me, inflation rate at 2%, which is going to run a little bit higher. That's what Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said. Central bank will be allowing the inflation to run up higher than 2% for a period of time because they want inflation right now. So Andy Yee is a senior director of policy at Visa, tweeted about the Fed's latest move. And he said, Jerome Powell's speech today will be for the history books. The Visa executive continued, never in the history of mankind was so much stolen from so many by so few. Opt out with Bitcoin. And when I read this, I'm like, oh, great. It's, you know, it's Visa talking about this. It's not. It's just an executive who has his own opinion. If you go to his actual, I'll just go to his account. This is Andrew. This is Andy Yee. Okay. Bitcoin Maximus, Senior Director of Policy, formerly Google Industry, uh, UCLBT. Views are my own. And that's it. I mean, it's, so I thought it was interesting to note. So if you see this on other, other YouTube channels where I'm talking about Visa's talking about this Visa, they're not. It's just a guy who is an executive of Visa, who is really into Bitcoin. That's fine. It's like me when I worked in healthcare. You know, I'd, I'd always tell my patients like, hey, you know what? What might help you with your knee a little more is stem cell therapy. I had stem cell on my knee. You should take a look at it. Is that the policy that the for the company that I worked at? Absolutely not. But it was just another opinion to, to go for. So again, take it with a grain of salt. But uh, let's move on. Next up, Chinese bank disables digital yuan wallet after soft launch. So a major bank quietly opened up a wallet service for China's central bank digital currencies to public users, but they shot it down. So I'll make this very simple. I don't want to go into the too, too much of the weeds here. Central bank or the China Construction Bank or CCB, they had an online uh, app. And if you just looked or did a search in that app for digital yuan, 
uh, you would be able to actually activate it and use it. And once they, once the bank figured it out, like, hey, uh, this wasn't supposed to be released. I don't know how the heck that happened, but they just shut it all down and they sh they stopped everything. What I thought was interesting though is that this was the actual picture that somebody snapped. And what was cool about it is that the user had activated the service was assigned, could be assigned a specific wallet ID, which could be used to make transactions between the wallet and the user's CCB bank accounts. In addition, users could also send and receive digital yuan to each other by putting either their unique wallet ID addresses or an associated mobile phone number, which is pretty cool. Meaning like if you had, uh, somebody had a Wells Fargo account, uh, this is the American version, another person had Chase Bank, you could just send the, you know, the, the digital version and it wouldn't have to go, you know, across a bunch of different jumps. So it's kind of like Venmo for us, I, I suppose, but it's a central bank coin. And what was scary about this is that they just shut it down. So in an instant, you could just, you know, turn off the money supply. And here's the thing about banks. I mean, they can always shut you down at some point because that's that's where it is. But I think the big thing is for these banks to be able to see exactly what you're spending on, exactly what you're doing. And um, everything is, is accessible because it's not in the commercial banks anymore. It is in the central bank, which are pretty much tied to the government. And uh, especially in China. Now in America, America, once again, is falling behind because they do not have or haven't done anything with um, central bank digital coins. So we'll see how that all works out. But uh, I'm not very optimistic about it. I think the uh, entire world will pass us by and uh, we'll miss the boat. Anyhow, that's it. Let's move on. Next up, I don't know how this project is still around. Ethereum Classic is hit by a third 51% attack in a month. If you don't know what a 51% attack is, essentially if you have control of 51% of the actual hash power or the network, you can reverse transactions, you can you know, mess up all the blocks, and you can you know do double transactions like it's nothing. So this just happened the third time again. So how can anybody put any kind of um, stock or any kind of confidence in this project? Just go away. So the attack, this is what happened. The attack reorganized over 7,000 blocks or two days worth of mining, according to a tweet shared by Bitfly. The first two attacks reorganized 36 and 4,000 blocks, respectively. Notably, a leading organization behind the Ethereum Classic Network, ETC Labs, announced its strategy to protect the network from additional attacks last week, including defensive mining that is intended to stabilize the network's plummeting hash rate and resist future 51 attacks. That worked out like a lead balloon. After the first two attacks, Exchange OKX responded by saying it will consider delisting the asset due to the network's severe lack of security. Coinbase also took drastic measures by extending deposit and withdrawal confirmation times for ETC to roughly two weeks. So here's the thing. If you're an exchange and you've done your due diligence and you put it on there, and now this thing happens three times in a, you know, a very short amount of time, why are you still listing it? Do you think like, oh, well, they're going to they're, they're, they're gonna fix it. They just try to fix it. They couldn't fix it. Get it off your exchange and get another asset that actually can do th something. Like for Coinbase, I don't know why you don't have Cardano on there. That's ridiculous. I mean, you've got a project that is in the top 10 and is doing a ton of great things and it has a mainnet launch and they're going to do it. It just, it, uh, it does infuriate me a little bit, but ETC and Bitcoin SV, no problem, even though they're worthless. So, that's all I can say. Lastly, cryptocurrency seems largely unaffected by the series of attacks trading at 6.86 at last check, less than 4% below its price during the second attack. I don't know where the volume comes from. Maybe it's bots. Don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Last up, Chainlink acquires Blockchain Oracle solution from Cornell University. So I'll make this quick. Deco was co-created by R.A. Jules. I'm pretty sure I messed up his name. Former chief scientist at Digital Security from RSA. He will also join Chainlink Labs under the same title. So, so Ari went to Digital Security uh, because I believe him and uh, Sergey, which is the, the founder of, uh, of Chainlink, they wrote the original white paper. It says it right here. So they're going to work together to draft a second white paper. Uh, they had actually done this in 2017 with their CTO, Steve Ellis, and moving down. Nazarov said Deco can be used as a foundation for a few crypto wish list items such as permissionless credit or decentralized identification. For example, Deco can prove a person is over 18 by pulling data from a DMV while hiding the individual's birthday. That's pretty awesome, especially for all those. If you live in the States, there are 
three different reports that they can pull for your credit. And unfortunately, it has your personal information with it. So what would be fantastic is if they can pull the information without your personal data, because that's what happened uh, as far as it getting hacked just a couple of years ago, which is always great to have your personal information just floating around for anybody to look at. That's why Deco sounds pretty good. Anyhow, Nazarov said an oracle like Deco could one day allow a smart contract to query off-chain credit information, such as banking records, without overreaching into personal data. Deco is the way a lot of collateral will make its way to DeFi, Nazarov said. I got to tell you, uh, there's a lot of collateral. There's a lot of money going to DeFi right now. So if that can, can speed it up so much, the better, which is why we should probably should be looking at DeFi a little bit harder. All right, that's it for today's uh, videos. Thanks for sticking around with me. It was a lot of kind of all over the place today. But uh, I want to say thanks to all my subscribers and also to everybody who's joined up. And what I, if you don't know, is a join now button on the bottom right. Uh, it uh, doesn't give me anything special, just a buck ninety-nine, like a tip. And I just do random shout outs to like Michael Wilson and Arky, Arky Garcia, Patrick May, Jimmy G, Miss Fusion, that's a good one, and Eat My Shiz. So that's it for today. So thanks a lot for sticking with me and uh, being patient over the last weekend and didn't do anything. I uh, just couldn't make it. But that's it for today. See you on the next one.